Hello everybody. Today we will be reviewing Halloween Resurrection. Just give me one moment to grab my notes here. Do my analysis of the movie first, as I normally do. Um, so this movie starts off with uh, Lori in a mental institute. So this is a few years after the Halloween H2O events. Um, so it's now been 30 years, uh, as, it, as it stated at the beginning of this movie, it's now been 30 years since the original event, and I guess three years that Michael's been missing, and I guess 10 years after the H2O events, if I didn't already say that. Anyway, uh, turns out that Laurie killed the wrong person, Michael's still alive, he was somehow able to get away from that whole situation um, and ended up putting somebody else in his position by strangling them so they couldn't talk so the entire time they're actually trying to let Leroy know they need to be saved but she ends up beheading Michael at the end of the movie or at least what we thought was Michael turns out that it wasn't Michael um, Michael then arrives at the institute that Lori is in he's then seen on the cameras inside the institute um, Michael kills the security guards. He then breaks into Lori's room. Lori hits him with the lamp. Um, the chase leads to the roof of the Institute. Uh, Lori and Michael have this exchange. She hangs him by his foot. She goes to check his mask to make sure it's actually him this time. As soon as she goes to check it, he grabs her. They both fall. And as they're falling, Michael is able to take the knife and stab her. And then Lori says to him, I'll see you in hell. And he, Michael lets go of her and she falls to the ground. So then the next shot is at Haddonfield University. There's a teacher talking about the boogeyman. Um, talk about they must face the shadow. And if you're into uh, these movies, you know that the character is named the shadow even though in the movie they call him Michael Myers as the... But if you look it up on IMDb or anything, it's just um, known as the shadow. So that's an important part. That's why I, so I put a star beside it here in my notes. Um, so three friends get chosen for a show uh, at the Myers house. Sarah being the main character of this movie. Um is one of them. So uh, Sarah then sees Michael Myers in a mirror when they're uh, getting their costumes, I guess, for the show. Um, Michael is in the house um, already. He kills the cameraman as uh, they're setting up for the angles of the house, or for the angle of the show, sorry, my bad. Um, Dangertainment is the name of the show. Um, it's run by a guy named Freddy who we will talk about more later. So, everybody enters the house. By the way, there is more than just the three of the friends. There are more people that auditioned for the show that got the part. Um, sorry, I just left that out because it's kind of like a long, dragging on scene to get to the next part that's like more important of them being in the house. Um, uh, Sarah and... Uh, I wish I'd known. Sarah and Rudy find food in the house that's fresh. Rudy is Sarah's other friend, or one of them that got chosen. Um, they find Michael's knife in the drawer. They find a baby chair with straps on it. So everybody thinks that maybe his parents kept him in that when he was a child, which would explain why he is the way he is now or was growing up and as an adult. Um, then we go to Scotty and Miles, who are on the other end, who have been helping Sarah with IT support, while Miles has more than anybody else. Um, even though he hasn't met her yet, he's been helping her from I don't really know how far away, but anyway. Uh, Jen, who is Sarah's other friend, we hear her scream, 
uh, inside, uh, this is inside the house. She's missing, uh, light shines on Michael, Rudy shines a light on Michael when they're searching for Jen. Uh, Jen then scares Sarah. Then we go to Bill. Bill is another one of the characters inside the house that got chose for, chosen for the show. Um, all of a sudden he's looking at himself in the mirror. Michael busts through it and kills him. Um, kills Bill, that's kind of funny. I, I just laughed at that because of the Kill Bill series. Anyhow. Um, Jim and Donna are in the basement. These are two other people that were also chosen for the show. Um, they find a possible place where Michael's parents might have chained him up in the basement. Um, the wall crumbles, all these skeletons fall out. Then it goes to a shot of Freddie and Nora high-fiving because they've set this all up inside the house. Uh, Jim sees that the skeletons are fake. Um, we now go, there are two Michaels in the house now. Um, Freddie is dressed up as Michael to try to scare everybody in the house. Um, he then tells the real Michael to go find Nora, thinking that it's Charlie from earlier that Michael had killed at the beginning, who was the cameraman. So Charlie was the cameraman that Michael killed at the very beginning when they were setting up. So Freddy thinks that it's Charlie, so he goes, goes and tells him to find Nora, but it's actually Michael that he's sending to go find Nora. Um, Donna finds this bedroom behind the wall that just had fallen on them. There's a news article of Lori and a partly eaten rat. She goes to touch it and it ends up being alive. The, the light goes out in the bedroom. Um, she runs around frantically yelling for Jim. No answer. Michael appears, chases her down this hallway, kills her. Um, Sarah... Um, then sees Michael in the room she's in when she's sitting on the couch. She turns around and he's right there. So she runs to go get uh, Rudy and Jen, who are getting high upstairs. Um, Michael grabs Sarah. Jim then hits Michael over the head. Um, this turns out to be f um, Freddy in this costume. So now everybody thinks that it's Freddy just playing a prank on them. Um, so, Rudy and Sarah say that they're going to leave. Just when they're about to leave, Jen screams again because she pulls down the attic door to find Bill's dead body just hanging there. Um, Sarah then tells Jen that she's going to have to do better than that. Uh, the real Michael all of a sudden comes out of the room beside her, looks at her. Everyone thinks, of course, that it's Freddy at this point. Uh, Michael raises his knife and cuts Jen's head off. It rolls down the stairs. They all kind of stand there in shock for a second. Michael walks down the stairs. Uh, Sarah, Rudy, and Jim try to run. The door's locked, of course. Uh, Michael then kills Jim by, like, literally just picking him up and crushing his head because that's how powerful Michael is. Um... Sarah runs from Michael. Michael chases. Rudy calls for Michael to distract him from Sarah. Um, then there's this kind of like little fight between uh, Rudy and Michael. Anyway, Michael ends up killing Rudy. Rudy takes two knives and tries to like slice up Michael, but then he just grabs both of Rudy's arms and twists them and then pins Rudy up against the wall with the two knives and then grabs the knife out of the drawer that they found earlier and stabs him through the heart. Um, Sarah finds this hiding spot in a room. She pleads for help on the camera. By this time, Miles or Deckard is watching. So Miles gives her the location of Michael in the house and helps her escape. Sarah flees to the attic after being chased out of the bedroom. She gets cut on the leg, I believe, because uh, uh, Michael comes barreling out of the window and slashes away at her while she's climbing up the roof. Um, she gets back in the house, um, is directed to go to leave. She has a chance to leave now. Uh, when she, right when she's leaving, Freddy grabs Sarah. He says, oh my god, everybody's dead. 
They go to leave when Michael appears again, blocking their path. So then Freddy and Michael get into a fight. Um, Sarah tries to help by tying a cord around Michael's neck, I guess, basically, and, like, torso kind of thing. Um, Freddy then drop kicks Michael out of the second-story window. Michael's hanging there. Looks like he's, like, being choked to death by the cord. Um, somehow he survived, though. He gets back into the house, is right behind Freddy and Sarah, stabs Freddy. Sarah flees again. Um, she hides again from Michael. Uh, she then attacks Michael with a chainsaw, cuts these electrical cords, um, starts a fire. Uh, she tipped a lawnmower over because she had to run through the basement, too actually. So she tipped this lawnmower over, she starts this electrical fire, causes an explosion with the lawnmower. Um, Freddy then comes busting through the door, so you know he somehow survived. Um, then the second fight between Freddy and Michael ensues. Uh, Freddy is able to electrocute Michael and basically burns him alive through the electricity. And the fire, I guess, in a, in a way, yeah. Any, it, it was a it, it was a weird ending. Um, but there is lots of action at the end of this movie, at least. Um, he he saves Sarah. Sarah thanks Miles or Deckard for the help, basically for saving her life. Um, Michael is taken in a body bag. Sarah asks to see his face. They get to see his face. Michael then arrives at the morgue. The girl who's uh, in the morgue opens the body bag, and then all of a sudden Michael's eyes open, and then the credits roll. So I would say that all in all, this movie was kind of an odd ending to the Laurie Strode story, I guess. I mean, it's I guess it's okay that they ended it that way. Um, it's, it's just such a weird cast. Um, Busta Rhymes and Tyra Banks were in this one. They kind of took this in a different direction. I mean, it had horror elements to it, and the at least I found that they kept the iconic mask design for this one at least. Um, because they were going with the Laurie Strode story still, even though. This one seemed like it was more of an action movie than a horror movie. It was like, it had like very small horror elements, but they tried to make it into like almost like a comedy action, which was kind of weird. I didn't really like this movie as much. Not saying that it was the cast, it was probably just the way it was directed, because I've seen Buster Rhymes and other stuff and he seems to do a good job. Um, I don't really know if any of this cast has done any other movies other than really Buster Rhymes and Tyra Banks I know he's done a couple movies so um I think that was my only real gripe about it was just that the direction they took this was kind of odd for the last movie in this series because then after this it's just uh, the, the reboots the Rob Zombie reboots and then uh, of course sorry the uh, one from 2018, but there's a lot of explaining in this story line to do because it kind of changes. But for this storyline, it was a fitting way to end the Laurie Strode thing. I just think maybe they could have done something different, like, because it just seemed like Michael was killing senselessly for no reason, other than the, other than the reason that they were in his house. Which, I mean, I guess he was protecting the house. If you want to put it that way, maybe that was the direction they were trying to go with it. But they don't They don't really describe that in the story. It's just like, they go into the house. He's already been there. He kills them all. There was no real storyline to it, I guess. So, uh, anyway, I would give this movie about a 4 out of 10. It was probably my least favorite one out of all of them. Besides the season of The Witch one. So yeah, 4 out of 10, I would give this one just because there was, 
the direction they took it wasn't really what I was hoping for anyway, other than the ending of the Laurie Strode story. Um, so basically I would say that the very beginning of this movie kind of saved this movie in a way. I mean, it would have been weird if they kept going this direction with the movie series as more of an action comedy, I would say, because it's supposed to be a horror genre type movie slasher film. So anyway, that is all I have to say about this movie. Um, and I will uh, see you guys in the next one. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.